Hello? Yup. You know what's good with it, Jay Diggs? What's up with it, family? How y'all doing? Hey, man, cool it, bro. Hey, man, we appreciate you coming through, Duff for the Cloud Chaser, bro. A real nigga. Salute, I salute. Well, Jay Diggs, we got a lot of questions, bro. Like, with the whole, I know you had broke it down like tons of times, though. But just so the people don't that don't know, you know what I'm saying, how the song came about, you know, uh, who told you that they wanted to fade? Uh, I mean, it was <coughs> it was whack. You know, it was all party. It was all party. His whole little little spill when he was getting on when he when he called himself going bad on me and my mama anyway. You know, he he was he was he was already defending blue him and blue and then was in that in the clubhouse and all the shit. You know, he and he was upset because somebody when that was going on you know he just got to ranting you know who is jay diggs man fuck jay diggs fuck jay diggs mama blah 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 she sucked dick yeah yeah fuck uh, matter of fact i'm gonna make sure it ain't good woo 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 and i need a fade and you know he just did all the shit he did all the talk right right, right. that's a fact you know just like with the blue da vinci situation like a lot of people don't know that Blue Da Vinci had actually mentioned your name first on the interview. I believe it was with Al Prophet. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? So, you, can you speak on that? Like Blue mentioning your name and you felt that. Yeah, that's, this, that that, that, that's, that's, that's Yeah, that's where it all started. What made you? What, what felt like? What made you Prophet. respond though to Blue? The, the Al Prophet guy um, asked Blue. You know, well, Blue, how did the rumor first get out that you were supposed to be a rat? So Blue was telling the story. He said, you know, it, it, it all started from Big Meech. He said, Big Meech called Jay Diggs and told Jay Diggs that I was a rat bastard. So this was the day that Blue went to court. So, you know, Blue was my partner. Meech was my partner. We was all fam. We all fuck with it. So, you know, the day, the day that Blue went to court and he got his time, he called me right after court and told me, hey, I got my time. They gave me five years, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking to him. So while I'm talking to him, I get the click on the other line. It's me. And while I'm talking to Blue and me say, hey, you know Blue went to court today, man. I said, yeah, I got Blue on the line. He said, well, you can click over and tell Blue that I told you he's a rat bastard. So so um, that's what I did. I clicked over. I say, you know, Blue, me say you was a rat bastard. What's going on? So Blue defended himself. And we going back and forth. Me, Meech, and Blue going back and forth. So, um, you know, at the time, at the time, Meech, Meech's whole thing was that that it, he didn't say that Blue was never the issue. What, it, what, his, what his issue was was that Blue took a safety valve, which was a deal that says that they'll give you a time reduction if you basically go meet these requirements and you go sit down with the federal government and debrief, you know? So the the, the big question was, um, Blue Blue was talking about, well, Meech was mad because he thought Blue told about this limo that we all knew about that had a million dollars in cash in it and these guns that they went and got. But that wasn't the big thing that Meech was tripping on. So I basically just called in and I told and I told when I was doing the interview, I said, if Blue really want to clear his name, I said, tell Wack to tell Blue to get his debriefing paperwork. So that's the, the paperwork that he went in that little room when he was talking with the people and when they was asking him questions during the debriefing and his answers. Now, that's not public information. So the only way he can get that is through his lawyer or some shit like that. So that's all I said. I said, you know, tell Wack. Um, ask Blue for that if Blue want to clear his name. Tell him to get them statements. So when somebody asked Wack that shit, he took that as the time to just go go in on me. You know, at the time, you know, he, he ain't know who I was, all the shit. But that wasn't no excuse for the shit that he said. So you know, and I, and I took it at face value. You know, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Let's get there. So that's why I was. And then you know, and not only did he say that, he decided to to, to say, oh yeah, matter of fact, I just heard Jay Diggs married to a man and. You know, he, then he starts slandering my name in the whole conversation. It's one thing to say, fuck me and whatever. Right. You know, feel. But when you start slandering the nigga name and making up shit, so he 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 he, he really tried to poison uh, the bloodstream of the internet with some bullshit, you know, and thinking he was going to get away with that shit, just have motherfuckers just speaking on me like it was just nothing. So, you know, that's why I attacked this, this shit with the aggressive this that I'm on, you know. I ain't no clout chaser. I don't give a fuck about this internet. I could do a lot of shit to get clout. But when a motherfucker be that disrespectful, you know what I mean, and at the same time turn around and try to run a nigga name through the mud, it has to be it has to be addressed on a certain level. 
You understand? So that's that's what oh, I've been on. Sure. That's that's why I've been on the level that I've been on with this whole situation the whole time. It's because of the way dude got at me and the way he playing with the internet with my name. No, I got you. Look, I'm gonna um I'm gonna take you back there in just a second, but I I want to give him some more background. Like, you know, you were speaking on like the debriefing with Blue Da Vinci, and like um. You know, you pretty much, I would say that shit, you done fed time, shit, you should be an expert on it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Can you tell them about your, your first uh, fed case, bro? How you caught that? Well, so I, I, I went to the I went to the feds in, um, in 92, bro, for conspiracy and attempt bank robbery. So me and um, my co-defendant, if anybody know who Mac Dre is, Mac Dre was my co-defendant, my crew, the Romper Room crew out the Bay Area. So we we was a suspect in, in, in over twenty three bank robberies in the Bay Area. It was on unsolved mysteries and all the shit. And uh, so we went as kids. I went to, at nineteen years old. I went and did ten years in the feds. I didn't see a day of my twenties on the streets. So I I grew up in the feds. I came home thirty years old from the feds. Um, seven different eight no eight different institutions. I started Terminal Island. Terminal Island and uh, out in San Pedro and ended up in um shit everywhere from from Lompoc Park to Lewisburg to fucking Raybrook, New York, Farrington, New Jersey. Like I was everywhere, you know, all through the federal system. So I'm I'm very familiar with the system and how it works. It's a lot of people familiar with me in the system. So yeah, I did. I I did the ten, and I did state time too. Like I did state and fair time. I did I did two years in the state. 10 years in the feds. No, for sure. So that, that's why I say, like, so when you when you said that, you know, because uh, I think at the time you had said that the bald head nigga, you know what I'm saying, a.k.a. Wack 100, he basically should know, you know what I'm saying, about a deep Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, 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 he knows. So tell yeah, him he, to show paperwork. Yeah, he definitely know what that is. He he know he know what that is. And, and his thing is he, he really pick and choose who he gonna get on and he, he he just choosing to um he choosing to give blue a pass i try to text him something. he choosing to give blue a pass just like he giving takashi a pass and then to turn around right around and then jump on the internet and call somebody else a rap so you know it was just one of them situations like i said i never disrespected dude or none of this shit and he just went bad on me I don't, I don't know if it was just the fact that I asked the right question or Jerry, he just felt like that was just how he wanted to get out of nigga. But it, it happened. It happened. Yeah, I think and, you asked the right question. And, and, and for and for real, for real, he let he let he let blue he let blue put a put a blanket over him because at the end of the day that question never got answered. You know, blue didn't answer that. Yeah, and that, that goes to my take next there. question though, Jay Diggs. Like, how you feel about like don't it seem like Oh, now shit is is whacking JDs. Now they off of blue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it is. That's it's whacking blue. JDs. Yeah, blue. He he ain't. They don't want to talk so about. You think that. that shit was a distraction? Uh, it was. It was definitely a a, a distraction on on on, on Wack 100 side. You know, for as far as he knew that that was the right shit to ask, and he didn't want to get put in that position where he had to ask blue that. You understand what I'm saying? He don't. He he. He's not the type. He's not the type to say. You know, if he fuck with a nigga in there, right? He don't care. It's good. I fuck with him. That's my partner. He's not the type of motherfucker to stand on business and say, "Hey, bro, you you got down with them people, so I can't deal with you." Because if you pay attention, my nigga, he's definitely the, the type that get down with them people too. Like it ain't even no no mystery. So, yeah, it, it's just you know, it's them and then there's us, bro. It just depends on what side of the fence you play on. Me myself, I I got I got um. I got sent to the feds. I had an informant that wore a wire on me. You feel me? And all the shit. So I went. To, I went to prison for an informant. So my understanding for that shit is zero. Like I, I don't. I don't tolerate that shit. I don't deal with that shit. I don't give a fuck who you is. If you told on another man, so you don't have to go do your time, and you sent another man instead. Well, you know, you's a rat, and and you deserve to get treated like one from my kind. You know, I'm I'm on the other side of the fence. So, you know, it just depends on what side of the fence you play on. Uh, that's how you're going to look at the situation. I just play on this side. Right. And look, like, um, I know, you know, like, the campaign for, like, where Jay Diggs at. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Mezzy Mar and uh, JT the biggest figure. Like, how you feel about Mezzy Mar right now, bro? Because I know a lot of people probably ain't asked you that question. 
Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, Mesh, Mesh jumped out the window. He, he did some bullshit. And then, and then you know, Karma come with that shit. So Karma bit him in the ass. You know, I didn't have to do nothing to little dude. That was my partner. You know, I fucked with Mesh and all the shit, you know. But at the end of the day, when you a fuck nigga, it, 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 it's going to show. It's going to come to light. You know, you can, it don't matter. And that's why I try to explain to people, like, you can like a person's talent. You can like how a person play basketball. You can like how a person rap. You can like all that shit. But if you don't really know that person, you might come to find out that the person that you are adoring and that you're crazy about is a really a fuck nigga or a fuck bitch, and they really on some different type of time. And, and that's what it is with a lot of these artists. You know, people like the artists, and they like what they hear in their music. But if they got around these people, and if they if they really knew the inside, they'd be like, oh, man, this is a piece of shit. This nigga's a piece of shit. Like, this nigga ain't, you know, it ain't nothing like what his music is. And But on Messi case, Messi, you know, he that's his name. He'll tell you from the gate. Messi, he's a messy-ass nigga. You know, he, he, he used to make songs about doing messy shit. You know, he's the type of nigga to make a song talking about when his, his homeboy ain't looking, he finna go fuck his homeboy bitch. You know, so he do shit like that. Like, he's just right. that type of nigga. So, you know, it, it was. It was what it was. It was karma catching up to a nigga that just had to, had, had to get his issue. So, you know, I, I you know, and, and I don't wish nothing bad on a nigga. He did it to himself. I, I, I just, yeah, you know. Yeah, he locked up. Like, a lot of people had said that, you know, Magic Mag Marvin got on dope real bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you heard that, but yeah, he said, I, I, I don't I, well, know if they say he clean now because you know he in prison. Nah, nah. So, so. At the end of the day, man, you know, he, he definitely not clean. You know, drugs has always been his downfall. You know, people that know him know he always been. But what happened was when he, when the shit happened with us and all the shit, you know, he stretched himself out to the point where he just, he couldn't come back. And now at this point, it ain't even about the drugs no more. Like, he didn't fucked off his mental health. You know, you know how you go so bad on drugs and you go so hard in the streets that you could just fuck your mental health off? And that's what he did. I mean, it's sad to say, but yeah, he he he's not even mental mentally there anymore, bro. So, yeah, in jail, even in jail, like he's the one in jail that's talking to himself, walking around, you know, looking up, looking down. Like it's fucked up to say, it, but it's really true though. Like, but it, it's crazy. It's been rumors of that, though. I ain't gonna lie. It's been no, rumors of that. No, I thought even, like they it, said that he got clean it, or something. It's not even a rumor at this point. Yeah, you you clean. He clean because it ain't no drugs to smoke. But he's not he's not mentally clean, bro. His, his, his mental health is fucked up. So you can be in jail and be off drugs and still be fucked up. I and mean, that's the whole thing. It ain't just a, it wasn't just a drug. It wasn't just let me go get clean and now I'm good. I'm and I'm back. He 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 got mentally fucked up during during all these times, bro. So um, people that's going up there to see him, they can't even hold a, a decent conversation with him. It's that bad. Mm. Well, Look though, um, uh, let me ask you this though. So, like, when it comes to JT, the bigger figure, I know, I think some of the things that the ball head dude has said was some things that JT, the bigger figure, had came out his mouth and said on uh, social media. Yeah, he been you, trying. You to want to address any of that? Yeah, that's all. You know, JT been trying to paint this narrative since you know, this is like me, same shit. When we fell out, first thing a motherfucker gonna do. Let's try to find the file of shit that they can find on somebody, you know? So, so JT started to bullshit with the rumors about, about me and Kilo, which was Mac Dre's best friend. Uh, he started, he started dropping this narrative in people's head that we might've been behind setting Mac Dre up to get Dre killed so we can take his estate. And we took everything from his mom and his daughter, like, you know, just the biggest bullshit that you could ever come up with. Like, but anybody that's been following this movement, they know. They already know what it is. They know Mac Dre Mama run his estate. They know Mac Wanda is a boss. She got complete control over Dre everything. And they know all we ever did was push this movement to the top. You know, and keep keep the Cuddy name alive. But that was some shit. The, the dudes don't they have uh, Yeah, yeah. And don't they got Mac Dre Day out there? Yeah, we got we got Mac Dre. As a matter of fact, July 5th, man. Um, Mac Wanda, his mom, every year. She got to deal with Live Nation. She throw one of the biggest concerts in the Bay every year. Every year, July 5th, is in Frisco. We go crazy. All the artists come out. The artists that been around Dre from the beginning, which is, you know, us. And then we bring in some major artists. And we throw a big show every year. It's going to be it's coming up July 5th. His mom and his daughter throw that show every year. And we just, you know, make sure it go good for 
but the JT the bigger figure, so he has said some huge. Uh, yeah, he another one, bro. That nigga off in Africa right now. He off in Africa right now. He fighting his own demons. He another one. He, he just like mess. They got demons they be fighting. And they go through some shit. They go through some shit, but at the end of the day, he he really just, just trying to keep his career alive, too. Like, he one of them ones that the only time he gets some views and some likes is when he bring up my name or Mac Dre name. <laughs> and he tell you a wild story. Well, look, he got a famous story, though, where he say that he ran down on Mac Dre and, you know what I'm saying, they had the Uzis out and all this. And it, Did you ever hear about this? Is, is it any truth to that story? He tells a story about what? What you said that again? A story when he did what? Yeah, can you hear me? I think I'm in it. Major. I, I can hear you now. Yeah, I said he tells a story like how he had ran down on Mac Dre and he had the Uzis out and all this. And, all right, so, so the story he tell, not so the story he be telling, right? So I'm gonna tell you the story. So the story he be trying to tell when did he got all fucked up? There's a story about when we went to Filmo, when Dre before Dre even had a a a, 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 a whole ass album out, his beginning of his Dre career, it was actually his first project. And we had a show in Filmo, and um. And we was maybe 18. And we go to the show. And the field the uh, the show was um was Cool Nut, Rest in Peace Cool Nut, um Mac Dre was somebody else on that show. But long story short, so it was it was in the field mode area for the show. So everybody performed. And then Cool Nut and them got into it with the field mode niggas. So it was a big fight going on in the show. So us, our crew, it was probably about ten of us. We all trying to get up out that motherfucker out there fight. So when we leaving to get out the show, uh, somebody yell out and uh, thing was like, man, who the hell, uh, who laughing at OCP? That's out of control projects. So that was the field mode niggas. So when that happened, they basically, they stole on one of my partners. It was like 10 of us. They stole on one of our partners. And they tried to get on us. And they tried to get on us and chase us to our cars. When we got to our cars. That Uzi he was talking about that whipped out. That wasn't Dre with that Uzi. Yeah, I flipped out on the niggas. Me, I was in the car with Kilo, Big Dot, my homeboy Ray Ray. At the end of the day, they thought they was finna jump us. They thought they was finna jump us. <laughs> and we whipped out. It didn't no shots get fired or none of this shit. It all went away. But this was, like I said, in Dre early, early days. So it was a true story. It happened. Oh, for sure, bro. But that be But, but Dre, Dre, Dre didn't have no gun on him, though. But his niggas did. We did, for sure. And we ran them niggas up off of him. And that was, like I say, that was when Drake's first album, very first came out. That shit was early 90s. Like 91 or something when that shit happened. But but Dre didn't fuck with, 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 with JT like that. He was cool. Dre put him on a project when, we first, when he first got out the pen. I, I, what's going on over here, though? What's up with that head title, though? Hey, hold on, hold on, son. Hold on. I'm doing an interview right now. I'm going to get to some questions. Who said that? Nike oh, said that. On. Yeah, I shot him. Go ahead, son. Yeah, what you were saying, though, J.D.? No, pardon me, bro. I, don't know. I was just finishing up, bro. It's all good. We can get to the next. Oh, for sure, for sure. And, like, um, like right now, though, bro, like, you know, you coming out with the song and the shit going viral, bro. The shit damn near to half a meal in a few days. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you feeling about that, though? Because they said that this is the, like, if Uncle Murder don't put this on that recap, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> well, this you is know. one of the diss songs of the year. Well, you know. How you feel about it, though, J.D.? No, it's cool. At the end of the day, I ain't doing nothing but trying to Feed the niggas on medicine. That's all. Song cool, but I really want to fight. Fuck that song. Yeah. I really want to. I really want to embarrass this nigga though, because he talked too much, and he really act like he liked that. So, my thing is, let's make this shit happen. All that he doing it for clout shit. No, I'm doing it for a fight. 
I really was trying to make this nigga mad enough to say, let's do it. I thought this would have for sure. I thought that song would have for sure been like, okay, fuck it. I got to fight this nigga. But at this point, I don't know what to do to get him to stand on what he said. Man, it's like, I think 30 more people that want them fades from dude. You know what I'm saying? They want all that. So, oh no, he always give them that address, though. But, like, if you smart, why would you pull up to that? Like, come on, man. Bro. That shit sound crazy. That shit ain't, ain't nobody. Just like, what you talking like, about, like, because, go just, ahead, bro. And I was just going to say, just like he made up that fake ass story about them Texas. Like, I'm, I'm really convinced this nigga really texted himself. That's what I was about to ask you, no bullshit. He really texted the whole ass conversation. Can you speak on that, bro? Because I know you had said if bro, tell, you had hey, said listen, tell bro. him to uh, reveal the number and then call the number. Yeah, because that was the only thing he could say after all the shit that was going on. And they like, man, Diggs, you know, really trying to line it up. Because I really had a nigga call him. Not on no internet shit. Really hit his number. The nigga didn't know him. A nigga I know. And simply say, man, my dude trying to line it up. It didn't have to go to the internet. He could have said when, where, whatever the fuck. He spent it off. Oh, man, he, he don't dictate nothing, blah, blah, blah. And then the next day, he gets to talk about, man, the nigga Jay Diggs text me, talking about he in L.A. I text him the address. And, he, you know, he made up this whole ass story about me being out there. I'm like, my nigga... I don't, I don't, first of all, I'm not going to text a nigga out of no blind and get to talking about I'm somewhere, let's pull up, let's fight. Like I, I, I like I said, I had somebody reach out to him. This nigga had all these long ass paragraphs. Like I don't even t text my bitch that much. And, and he really ran with that. Every time somebody asked him, that was his way to spin people off when he asked them about me. Oh, I gave him the address. I dropped the address. No, you didn't, pussy. He's a pussy for real. And I call him in his face. And that's what I want to do. I want to look him in his face. He won't look me in the face. The nigga won't even get on the phone with me. He'll yell and holler with a fan and re weird ass niggas. I'm not going to yell with a nigga though, but I just really want to just say, hey, look, cut the crap. Let's just get a date, which I got a date now, June 22nd in Los Angeles area. All the shit. Hey, that's like a message to the whack and nigga, bro. Like, yeah, they got the title the, whack and nigga because they got they the nigga only yelling shit something. We got the paid preview people on deck. <laughs> Everything set up. UFC though, we not doing no, we not doing them old clumsy ass boxing gloves that they be doing. We're gonna do some UFC shit and get the people what they want. If the pussy pull up, I think he pussy and he ain't gonna pull up. But well, that's the only reason why I'm doing this shit. Because I know I can find him on Clubhouse. I know if he don't hear nothing else. <laughs> yeah, he'll be on club. <laughs> he's gonna be on Clubhouse with his ass in the air somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, the nigga was yelling at me on that rent he did about you. He like, yo, big Chuck this. Big Chuck gonna run for the hills. He gonna laugh and all this. Like, no, I'm really laughing at that nigga right now. You know what I'm saying? Cause he's supposed to be this tough ass nigga for the whack and that's. Like, man, show proof. You feel me? Like, he talked about your age. So, okay, so make it happen. You feel me? Oh. But look, bro, oh. I appreciate you, though. Um, I got a few questions that some people that's on the stage right now. I know, uh, you know your time is limited. I'm a, uh, there you go. You got any questions, bro? I ain't got none. I'll answer a few before I get out of here. That's good. Hey, Diggs, look at that picture right there, bro. This bam, bro. Where? Let me see. Look at that picture. This bam, bro. What picture, though? I don't know. I don't know. The picture I got on my motherfucking uh, PTR, bro. That must be profile, bro. Listen, I'm got you. Yeah, Nigga, he don't out. know nothing about this clubhouse. Like, like yeah. Hey, Ghost, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on for one second, bro. I'm gonna get to you, bro. Let me go. You don't got nothing to ask him, uh, T Money. Yes, sir. Yeah, I do uh, want to ask him something right here. Go ahead, Ghost. Oh, you want to go first, T? Go ahead, Ghost. I might now, I take a minute. <laughs> I wanted to ask you this, bro. Um, Wack was saying some shit like the Blue Da Vinci allegedly made up this story and said he came to your crib and checked you and all this shit. That shit, cap of that shit, true. Man, that shit, that nigga, that, that, listen, last time Blue was at my crib, he was sleeping on, on my couch type shit. 
Ain't nobody came to my crib. Ain't nobody checked me about nothing, my nigga. Blue is like my son, my nigga. I'll slap the shit out of Blue. Blue will not check me for nothing. Nobody around Blue. So all that shit is bullshit. All that they check me, I don't even know where all that shit came from, bro. They niggas got mad because I put the song out, Blue did, and I told the story. But he ain't never said nothing to me about it because it ain't nothing he could say to me about it because it was all true. And like I said, my nigga, in the song, anyway, I, I didn't call Blue a rat. Nigga, your boss called you a rat. So... You know, that's something he had to take up with Blue. I mean, with, with Meech. But ain't nobody checked me. Ain't no, ain't nothing one of them niggas said nothing to me about nothing. And I still be around real mob niggas. I still go around. I still, I just did a BMF documentary with Big Bull. Yeah, with Bull. I just did that in Atlanta. And, that, and that's coming out too. So, you know, all that shit Blue talking about. They say when y'all was off tour, Blue, Blue, was, Blue, was, Blue was begging Fab for money too. That's true. Yeah, Blue ran. I'm listening. I don't know what he asked Fab for, my nigga, but I'll tell you this shit. And I'll tell you this shit. In my right hand of God, I got 10 kids. I put the only child I got, my nigga. Before that tour was over, Blue was broke. Period, my nigga. And we had to and when, when, to, to get that bus to where it was going, Blue pulled up on me. I was on that tour with six of my bitches and 20 niggas from BMF. And, 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 and Fabulous know that. <laughs> in fact, some of Fabulous crew was on there with us, too. And, and before that bus, before that bus made it all the way to his last destination, I was filling that motherfucker up seven hundred dollars a stop. And when it stopped, his last destination was the Bay Area, and BMF was in the Bay Area. And I bet you half the Bay Area remember them days. And I got that nigga. I had that nigga was up under my movement, staying at my house, nigga, moving up under JD. There wasn't no big Meech out there giving him a quarter. And nigga was smoking my weed, driving my cars, nigga, uh, fucking my hoes, and doing everything else. <laughs> yeah. Hell no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, no, nah, I know that shit true, bro, because I know somebody that was on that tour with y'all. I know that's true. Yeah, it's not true. It's not. It's nothing phony about that, for sure. I, and we started that motherfucker in Detroit for the Super Bowl, and it, and it ended up in, in the Bay Area. It was the last stop, and we touched everything in between, everything from New York and motherfucking uh, California. It was a dope tour. It was definitely dope and all the shit, but yeah, that shit, you know, that was the beginning of the end right there. Hey, you good, Ghost? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go ahead, T. Yo, what up, JD? This is T Money, man. Um, I used to, I, me and Wack just got into it a few weeks ago, man. We've been going back and forth our goddamn last few weeks, man. I, I used to be over there at my club and everything with the hunter side and shit, so we fell out and, you know all that shit but how you feel with the nigga just inserting like you know innocent family members and shit like your moms and shit like that you know what i'm saying people that well, ain't got nothing to do with nathan well here, here's my thing right i know niggas to say anything out their mouth and it's just like cabin you know it's always been fuck your mama that ain't nothing new you know what i mean i i i understand all the, all the bullshit that come with that money i, I didn't play that game with niggas before you know, I got a bigger problem though. My bigger problem is, bro, it, it, it's the 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 misrepresentation of a nigga's character and really breaking a nigga into some bullshit um, with with this internet shit. You feel me? Because people hear that shit the first thing they thinking. You know what I mean? Right. Your they first impression. Of but and he could have said what he said. You know, fuck J Diggs, mama, fuck him. He could have said that. You know what I mean? And it probably wouldn't even been as bad as oh oh yeah, and this nigga uh then touch the 13 year old he's a pedophile or he married to a man and and a nigga doing you understand what i'm saying really assassinating the nigga character you understand what i'm saying that's the that's the problem i got with this nigga is that he'll use his platform to make up a complete lie about somebody that's a fact that nigga made up lies about me that's a that's fact a speaking of lies like how you feel about that man just coming out and blatantly saying the J Diggs nigga, the one that had something to do with um offing his Max, I don't even want to repeat that shit. Yeah, that's that's the point. That's that's the problem I got, my nigga. You can say fuck me, fuck my mom, you can say all that, my nigga. But when you start talking about a nigga that killed a nigga, and killed family members, and uh, our nigga this nigga that said I had my son killed for insurance money, like my nigga <coughs> at some point in time, people gotta look at this nigga like, bro, where are you from? My nigga, where 
where, where they do that at? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't even see how niggas can even take him serious no more after all the fuckery he puts in the air with nothing behind it, nothing to back up. You know, I understand some of the shit he just said is, is proven, but for the most part, ain't nothing this nigga really be saying be real. Facts. <clears throat> That's a fact. So, so, so... From now, like before, when you known a whack one hundred, and after all this shit, now what's what's your opinion of the nigga before and after, man? I ain't gonna lie, bro. I had, I had, I had, I didn't really know who dude was. I knew what what <coughs> that he was tied in with game and blue face and all them, but I had no knowledge about dude like that. You know, I knew he had got a little fight, bro. I don't really be on the internet like that. Right. So I, you know, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Okay, you know, nigga be pushing his line. But after dealing with this nigga, this nigga's a clown. There's no other right. word about it. There's no other word you can <laughs> use for this nigga but a clown. I mean, he's a serious clown. And you can't take a nigga like this serious. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, now him, him like dealing with like blue and and not, not specifically blue just by itself, but you know six nine. I had a, a gal over here that um I found out she had paperwork on there. She cooperated and shit. So I I kicked her out. He picked her up. He tried to convince me to keep her. You know what I'm saying? And made up an elaborate story about. Her nigga probably told her to get out the jam. So what you think his infatuation and love is for motherfuckers that be cooperating and shit? That shit is confusing I, 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 to me. I think I think this is his way of letting you know that he ain't got no problem cooperating. My nigga, he will get down on the nigga. I for sure know that. Man. He already letting you know just by the shit that he condone. My nigga. And, and then my biggest thing is that, bro, how is you hollering blood and pyro this and pyro that and you condone that? My nigga? I don't know no real solid gang members they condone that type of shit right so, so now it's, it's 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 making me question like where what gang is you up under like who is your homies like and, and are they okay with that shit ain't no ain't none of your homeboys punch you in the mouth for the shit you do so maybe he's not even affiliated you know like i just seen the i told them they talking about you know it ain't even no such thing as what he claiming anyway but i don't know i'm not a gang hey, member, so. let me right. ask you a question though because i just thought about something like when you when you get out the feds and you still on federal probation, can you be around felons? Yep. I mean, they say they say you're not supposed to be. You know, it really just if you own federal probation, well, publicly, they can publicly, violate you for that. Publicly though, I can't. Publicly, you're not supposed to. I mean, they gonna put that's gonna be in your paperwork. You're not supposed to be with no convicted felons while. Six on nine, probation, on federal like probation. Six nine, he probably got permission to be around that nigga Wack 100. Ain't that something? I mean, Wack 100 ain't no felon. He ain't. Yeah. That's another question because he 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 like he active and portraying like the street nigga. He been in the streets so long. We all know he been in the industry for a minute. Uh, I know that he got convicted when he was sixteen and charged as an adult, and that's the only time he been to prison. You know well, what yeah, I mean? So they, that ain't counting for nothing, man. That nigga's not considered. No, I mean, you know, something he did at sixteen, they're not gonna charge him for that. He can go, and then plus it's entertainment too. So you gotta understand too, he got a job. That's just like the same thing they're going to say. They're going to tell you you're not supposed to be around no weapons, but if you got a security guard, you could be around a security guard with a weapon. You understand what I'm saying? So if the person is in, if you if, it, if it's at the place of work or something or something like that, you really ain't got no control over that. So I don't I don't really know the stipulations of his, his parole or his probation, but it's always raised around little shit like that, though. Like, I, like I, I wasn't supposed to be with no... Uh, I wasn't supposed to be with no ex felons either, but I, I Mac Dre picked me up from the halfway house when I got out, so we didn't give a fuck. Right, that's, oh, that's you, normal, you. normal yeah, shit. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions on the stage? I do got one more question. I forgot. I forgot to ask you this. I know you've been trolling and shit, acting like you want to get at his wife and shit. You you mean that shit, or you just troll? Nah, I, I, I'm just trolling. I don't really give a fuck about his wife. I'm just trying to touch him in this sensitive spot. I know he's a he's a, he's a sucker for a bitch, so I, I hit him with all the spots where I know it hurt at. But if she do open it up, I will send him a picture with my dick in her mouth. I will. If she open that mouth, I will. Just to touch him where it hurt at. <laughs> there you go. 
Hey, hey, so JD, let me ask you this, man. Why you think Blue Da Vinci won't just release that paperwork and dead that snitch allegation, man? You know what I'm saying? Because the nigga Wack always be saying, where the paperwork at? It's a fact he got debriefed because he admitted to it. He said he got debriefed. Yeah, he said it. He said he took him in that little room when he was young and all the shit. So, and, and he can get that. He can really right. get that. If he can get that, he can get, he can get that. And he can say, he can money. That that that'll get blue from out of all the heat that he been under, bro. That'll throw that shit all away. Hey, T Money, when you asked him that, cause T Money asked him, what he what he tell you? Um, he deflected and started arguing with another nigga on stage. <laughs> 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 he totally shot that question down and started arguing with somebody else about some other shit. No, let him up. Let me talk to this nigga. I'm like, bro, we ain't trying to do that right now. No, pull him back up here. Like, fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So he really didn't want to discuss that shit too much about that uh debriefing and uh it, it, it's 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 some kind of way he done studied it to where he could just deflect that shit, go to the left or to the right, especially with a motherfucker that ain't don't know. I ain't up on game, you know what I'm saying? Them the people he get it over on. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they, they both know though. Blue could have been did that. Blue could have blue could have made all this shit go away if he did the right thing or if that paperwork said the right thing. So that's the whole thing. He can get the paperwork, but it's probably not gonna say what we wanted to say. What he wanted to say. So it is and the cold thing about it, you know what's called up in anything, my nigga, I was rooting for blue. Like I've been saying the whole time, blue was my little brother. I was rooting for Blue. I didn't want this shit to be true. I didn't want that shit to be true. I didn't want Man. that shit. But I'm not the type of nigga that's going to let that shit be true, and I'm not going to speak on it. That's you a fact. Saying? And that, that's just the difference with me. Most niggas, like, oh, you my brother. It's just like with that whole Rallo situation that's going on over there, man. I know what's going on over there. And that nigga Rallo is all bad. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. Yeah, well, speak on, hey, JD, speak on I, that. Because that is the I, I ain't going to, hey, so, bro. so. So I'm not the one to really speak all the way in it because I don't got the, all the paperwork and all the shit. So, but 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 what I can say, he didn't already said it himself, my nigga. He was doing what he can do. You feel me? So it it, it is what it is, bro. At, at this point in time, and I know the nigga who busted him out. I know prestigious. Feel me? I know how he get down. Prestigious like me. We don't play the rat game. You feel me? I know prestigious personally. I know the nigga who was on the phone with Rallo when he asked him about the paperwork. So. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm, I'm going to let that shit open up itself, but niggas going to see it. But if you ask Jay Diggs, yeah, that shit all bad over there. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I ain't going to be the one to hide it. It's, uh, yeah, niggas better do their homework over there. You hey, Jay Diggs. Said, all the rappers. Like, yeah. when it comes to, like, since we speaking on the trending topic right now, like, because it's another case, though, why it's hell? And you got Gunner. You know what I'm saying? Gunner, he went in. You seen, the, you seen that footage? That... Definitely. That's definitely. How you feel about that? Police shit. You talking about the courtroom shit? Yeah. Yeah, that's police shit, my nigga. He can't get around that, my nigga. That's police shit. Everything he did, none of that shit was loyal to no gang shit. And it is what it is. He looked out for himself. And that's what niggas do. They look out for themselves. Fuck you at the end, bro. And that's just, you know. And see, that's the reason why, and, and, and I'll be trying to explain to people, that's the reason why I go so hard for Mac Dre. Because Mac Dre had that opportunity. Mac Dre could have said that exact same thing Gunner did. He could have turned around and said, yeah, the romper room niggas, them niggas is, yeah, them niggas on some other shit. And I'm just trying to do some music. And yeah, they was robbing banks and blah, blah, blah. And Mac Dre could have went home. But Mac Dre never robbed a bank in his life and went to do five years in prison, in federal prison, just because he kept his mouth closed because he chose not to tell on me. Stand up, guy. Yeah. So that's why I go so hard for my niggas. So for a nigga to even suggest some bullshit like this nigga, you know, that shit is crazy, but you know our real fans and real motherfuckers have been around our movement. They know what this shit is, and like I said, our shit is already rolling stone, my nigga. My book is out. It tells the whole story. Anybody really want to know the truth about any of the fuck shit the nigga said? They really can do their homework. You know, if they want to know. Hey, what bro, tell them the book though. Tell them the book, name of the book, and where they so, find it. At. So my book is called Soul of a Gangster. And it, it can be found anywhere you can buy a book. Actually, you can buy my book from Barnes and Nobles to Amazon and anywhere. My shit is on all all platforms. It's out. Solid, solid read. You can send it to your peoples in prison. It's 
really a top seller in prison. All the prison, all the prison yards is all over my shit. You know, like I say, I, I've been there and done that, so I speak a lot on prison, and, and I got a lot. I got a lot of prison beliefs in me. So, um, yeah, it's out. Soul of a gangster is out right now everywhere. Well, we in production of the movie, same title. It's getting in production. You know, what I mean, it's really, it's really, it's a Bay Area story. A lot of people that's not up on this Bay Area movement, like we move a little, we we move a little different where I'm from, but we got our own story too. So you know, I've been I've been I've been tapped in with with, with a whole bunch of people, with a whole different a whole bunch of different situations with this um with this whole with this whole romper room Mac Dre movement, man. We've been we've been doing this shit for years. You know, this ain't nothing new. So for a motherfucker to come after twenty years and try to come up with a fake ass story about what's supposed to have happened to Mac Dre, I think it's crazy. Matter of fact, we got a new documentary out. If you want to see that too, it's on TV One. It's called The Payback. It's a whole documentary about Mac Dre, and I'm uh, I'm talking on that shit too. So you know, anybody got any questions about our movement or how we get down or what happened over here? It's all it's all online. It's all you can find all that shit. If you want to find out what happened to Dre or you know, any of the shit, you can you can you can everything is, can be researched. Let's put it that way. So I swear, nigga, if a nigga let Wag 100 be they news reporter, boy, you'd be all fucked up in life. If you can't let me. man. Hey, <laughs> Yeah, that can't that can't let that be your news reporter. But hey, man, you know I, I appreciate everybody tapping in, tapping Smooth, in bro. the situation. All I need y'all to just help me get the nigga outside. I ain't asking the nigga nothing else, man. We just trying to get him outside for a fair. We just something that people want to see, just like they want to see. All you got to do is keep applying this pressure on the internet, bro, because this is where he live at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Long as you do that, you 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 fucking with his head, bro, and he gonna he gonna slip up. Yeah, that's all. I just wanted to say yeah to it. I just want. Ain't hey. gotta be no weird shit. Just some real grown man shit. Hey, hey, J. Biggs. Hey, before hey, you cut my nigga. Hey, this, hey, hey, this your this your fellow bait nigga. Four one five cool me speaking. My, my nigga. If I don't know if you can see my PTR nigga, but the but the campaign is on, nigga. It's Operation Run that on here, nigga. You know what I'm saying? We 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 put the pressure to that nigga, bro. It's Operation Run that nigga. Period. Off top, money. You, you from the yeah, back? So you already know how we get out anyway. You know, you you know how you know how we you know how we, you know how we push this line anyway, cuz. Hey, 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 everybody, hey, everybody in this room know, know how I push this base shit, my this nigga. Shit. Okay, yep, yep. I see you. I see. I see your profile. Yep, yep, I see, I see. Real nigga. Hell yeah. It's, it's Operation Run that, my nigga. We nigga, we applying the pressure to that nigga. We ain't give, you know, we don't get no suckers, no breathing room out here, man. So, you know what I mean? Okay. You, know yeah, you got to stand on shit at some point in time. Niggas got to stand on that weird shit. Hey, J. Diggs, hey, before man, you get up out of here, bro, I know you got to get up out of here, bro, but I got one more question for you, bro. This is the last question, man. Salute J. Diggs for coming through. Hey, J. Diggs, tell them where they can follow you at. Oh, it's, it's, it's J. Diggs, this. J D I G G S T H I Z Z Z three Z's because my the last one been took down but it's J D X T S man I, I be on the Instagram more than anything you DM me or something I probably can get back to you all the other social sites and shit I really don't be fucking with like that but I I do be on the ground I do be on the ground so you definitely tap in with me there and you always know what D X at that's one thing about it I'm always gonna tell you where I'm at you know, you tap in with me you'll find out what D X at no salute salute hey yeah, look. And everybody, man, when they think of drop pictures and shit and all that, man, y'all go on the on those pictures and you come in. J Diggs want the fade. Hashtag that. You know what I'm saying? J Diggs want the fade, man. Y'all hashtag that. But J Diggs, I know this is my last question, bro. I know you had a relationship with BMF, bro. But like, can you give us a story like on how that relationship even started? Uh, I've been I've been fucking with the mob. Did you meet first? Um. Shit, the first person I met in BMF would have been Big Cuz. Big Cuz, my nigga. This was back in shit. I, probably like 03. 03 when I first got next to the mob. We was in um Miami, Memorial Weekend. And, um, and you know, this is at the time when the hyphy movement, you feel me, this early in the hyphy movement. We just had the hyphy movement started in the Bay Area, and we had a, a DVD called Trio Television. So Trio TV was out and cracking at the time and on the West Coast, and BMF was pushing their movement on the East Coast. Now, Big Cuz from L.A. though, he's from the L.A. district, and um, we was we was it was a uh, uh, Memorial Weekend. I was on Washington. Uh, BMF had the club crowbar on lock. Meach was doing parties over there, so I was sliding by there in the middle of the night, and they called my name like Diggs, Diggs. So I look over, it's like 20, 30 niggas with all black BMF shirts on. 
and I, you know, I slide over. I, matter of fact, I was slide through on a moped. You know what I mean? Doing the doing the whole Miami Beach thing. Me and my niggas, and we bust a U turn and pull over. They're like, "Oh, geez, we fuck with you, my nigga. We up on the trill television. You woo, you Mac Dre, the whole Mac Dre movement and all the shit. It's the mob." So at the time, you know, I had already been hearing about BMF and all the shit, but I wasn't really tapped into the whole movement. But so the first thing he said was, "Man, the boss want to meet you for sure, man. You got to come by the house." So they invited me to the house. They invited me to the house that night, bro. We I pulled up to Meach Mansion that night. Matter of fact, that night, me, 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 Meach and Shug all met for the first time that night. It was the first time me and Meach met. Night? Yeah, first time me and Shug night met. First time Meach and Shug met. So me, Meach and Shug all met at Meach house. We had us a little meeting that night. I fucked with the whole mob, and then we tapped in, bro. From that time on, bro, it was just it was just love. We all we got we got a cool little understanding. Start fucking with it, and like I say, me and Blue got tight because we did music. I, matter of fact, I started. I stayed. I was down there for the weekend and end up staying for like a month. I was at Meach House every day for like a month. I got a I got an album called California Living Two, which was the album that put me on in the music game. With me, I did that album at Meach House where most of it was done at Meach House. I got a song called Really Not a Rapper. That was the first song that niggas really start taking me serious in this game. And it was done by uh, S Dog, a, a BMF producer. He used to do Jeezy uh, shit back in the day, all the shit. But yeah, so that's that's how our relationship started, bro. And that's like I say, in 03, it started. But then, like in 06, was when we went on the tour. On the, that's when that's when uh, we went on the whole BMF tour and shit across the country. This when Blue was looking for Jeezy on Jeezy Head about some other shit. It's all type of shit, boys. <laughs> it was one of them times, though. But yeah, because yeah, I think, I, hey, look, I, matter of fact, bro, I got it. Look, I think I, I heard you say on a shout out UOD, you had said, but you didn't get into it. But you were saying y'all ran down on Jeezy and he, shit, he got about it up. Yeah, so this was this was in Miami, actually. Um, so so we was already, you know, Blue Blue was already um, chasing Jeezy down because at the time Blue had a song with Jeezy and he had a song with Fabulous. Um, and he was trying to, he was, um, he had a deal with Koch and he was trying to get a release for the song for the radio. Um, so Jeezy was on tour too, you know, Jeezy was doing his thing. So Blue was trying to get the release for the song and the video. And at the same time, he was trying to tap into him with him about some shit with me. So we had been calling the nigga, trying to meet with the nigga, trying to get to the nigga. And he, he kept being, uh, kept shaking Blue for some whatever reason it might have been back at the time. And then, uh, and then we get a call. We was on the bus. We get a call on the bus. Um, that uh, and Jeezy called Blue one night. He's like, "Bro, that's fucked up, man. You know, the niggas just just took my chain inside the club. He was up in Magic City or one of the clubs in Atlanta. Jeezy called Blue in the middle of the night. We we sitting on the bus and he mad because some of the, some of the mob niggas had got on him, and and ripped one of his chains off his neck. You know, so." So that's the first time him and Blue end up getting up talking. So Blue like, man, we need to chop it up face to face. So he was, Meech was like, you know, and G, I mean, uh, Jeezy was like, he was finna be in Miami that weekend. So we was headed there too on the tour. So it was set up to meet in Miami. It was set up to meet in Miami for the, uh, to holler. So when we got to Miami, we was on a uh, ocean. So Jeezy had his whole team with him and Blue had, Blue had the mob with him too. It's crazy because Blue had a twin. They they both had twins that they fuck with. They brothers. And one 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 ran with Jeezy and one ran with Blue. So the twins is my nigga too. So uh, so when we finally got there, they 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 get a chance to talk. So Blue, me and Blue standing with with uh with uh Jeezy and the other twin, while while Blue and Jeezy talking. So some fans was walking by. That's hella niggas though. So some fans was walking by and they was. Oh, that's Jeezy. And they just wanted to get an autograph with Jeezy. Oh, Jeezy, can I get an autograph? But, you know, he was taking care of some real nigga shit. So uh, the, the niggas was like, man, nah, he's not talking right now. He's not doing no autographs right now. So one of the fans screamed out, man, oh, man, fuck you there. And it got stolen. So when he gets stolen, it went up from right there. Like, it was, you know, he was some street niggas anyway. But it went up from right there. So instead of, instead of the uh, Blue and Jeezy getting to finish having to talk, it turned into a melee on the beach. Shots Damn. fired, shots fired, all type of shit. And uh, matter of fact, Jeezy went to jail that night. Jeezy went to jail him, his limo driver, and all the shit. Cause one of uh, my nigga Big Cuz <laughs> jumped in the limo with Jeezy, and they was uh, it was shots fired on the beach and all the shit. So they end up pulling over his limo and, and, and some more motherfuckers. It was a wild night though. So they didn't even really get to finish all the shit. But it was yeah, it was getting thick though. It was at a time when 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 um. When, when the mob really was, was on some other shit with Jeezy, they wasn't really feeling how Jeezy was moving at the time. 
So that's true though, because like a lot of people, because Jeezy, you know, he got records, he be saying that it ain't true. Like shit, them, them niggas capping, like they fuck with me. So no, 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 no. Let's let's not let's not get it under misunderstood. Jeezy was definitely part of the mob, my nigga. He fucked with Meech, he fucked with Jeezy, all the sh- I mean, um, he fucked with Meech, Blue, all of them. They, they brought him in. Blue the one brought him in to the family. He was part of the mob, my nigga. He was with all the shit and, 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 and all the shit. He was, he was, he was right. Hey, bro, that's good. There was, Jeezy but, my favorite rapper, bro. <laughs> but there was, but there, there was a time when, you know, he started pulling away to go do his own thing, basically. And they felt a pull away. You know, once, once he got on, once he was getting on, you know, it was, he was pulling away. He went and did his own thing. You know, when that Boys in the Hood and all that shit came on, and then that CTE shit, I watched that whole shit. You feel me? All that CTE shit, that was kind of more like a, uh, they was kind of mimicking BMS. You know, they came with the all black shit. They started doing all the shit. So that was basically him starting his own mob after that. So that was, that was, that was just, you know, that I could, I, I from being on the inside, I could see the dis, dislike of, of what he had going on. Like, niggas wasn't feeling that. Like, it was BMS, now it's CTE. So that was that was a discrepancy at the time back then. Definitely. No, I got you. I got you. Man, yeah. that's crazy. Hey, bro, look, I don't know if you noticed. They just put it in the comments. I forgot to even ask you this shit. But the niggas just put up a video. It's a fake-ass phone call. They talking to some niggas. Talking about they know you from your town. You used to rap in another city. What they, what they say? I'm trying to Man, that nigga talk. talking to some kids. <laughs> that nigga talking to some yeah, that don't told, don't like, fucking know, know me for sure, for sure. I don't know who he was talking to, but the uh, only thing them niggas told that nigga that was halfway <laughs> halfway real. <laughs> Hello, they told yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, we can. Yeah, the only thing that nigga told them niggas that was halfway real is that I, I went to a school for football for a semester. In Richmond, Richmond, out right outside of Vallejo, and I did used to get down to Richmond. I got all type of shit. I had, I, I got down in Richmond, but I'm not from Richmond though. But yeah, I'm, I'm digs doing moving. I shot and been through all the spots, niggas and everybody. Everybody know me out here. Know I get down, and everywhere in the Bay Area. So yeah, I moved through Richmond and got down in Richmond, and I got down on some Richmond niggas and some Richmond niggas and try to get down on me, and we did all the shit. Like I'm from the streets, so yeah, I got plenty of street stories. But but I'm from Vallejo. I'm from the Crest. Niggas know where I'm from. What I represent and how I get out. So no, niggas, for sure. I appreciate whoever, you. Uh, yeah. So whoever them niggas was, them niggas are jokes. Them niggas don't know me for sure. Nigga, I'm I'm from Richmond, nigga, and, and I don't know them niggas from a can of paint, nigga. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who they was. They they definitely don't know me because I and I ain't been in the Richmond streets and. In, in 30 years so like what the fuck do you, what can you know about me bro you ain't if you ain't at least that age like you can't yeah, sure. <laughs> like it, but, sure, but, 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 but you, you, you never represented it's always, it's always, it was always suppressed with you no it's always been for real. but i spent i spent time i got out of richmond I, I made money in richmond i got a hell of partners this richmond and i speak on it though like everything i'm talking about it's in my book and in my music you know i speak on richmond shit in my music i got out like, i got out in richmond i made a lot of money in richmond but yeah, I'm I'm from the crest though. Harry, that has never been a mystery. Even yeah, all the I'm, Richmond I'm, niggas I'm, that know I'm, me know. Know where I'm from. Almost everybody's almost everybody is somebody that moved around in the Bay, man. And these the same niggas that was talking that that skied up from the Bay and went to L.A. So I mean, it's kind of like a hypocrisy there. Yeah, it's self-explanatory, man. It's self it's self-explanatory. But they, they like I say, them 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 sound like them, them niggas ain't even old enough to been a, nowhere around me though. Whoever them was, bro, like I'm. I'm on a different level in life. You feel me? When I when I the, the shit they talk, I was I, I graduated from school in '89, my nigga. Like so, what? What are they talking about? Right. <laughs> like, I'm just was, saying, ain't ain't no real bait niggas about to go against the grain and stop that sucker against another bait nigga. Period. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my my like I said, and I tell niggas all the time, my story is written in stone, my nigga. The book is out. Ain't nobody finna change my 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 story. It can't be changed. It's, I'm just. For the new niggas that don't know and anybody's interested, you know what I mean? I'm giving my insight, but my shit is written in stone. This whole romper room shit, this Mac Dre shit, everything is written in stone. Money. What niggas is trying to do now is write their own versions, but it, it, it can't happen. Like, you know, like I say, movie on the way, all the shit. So whatever a nigga might want to say, whatever they might want to do, you know, talk about, you know, the real shit is already out. You know, and like I said, they did that shit to Suge, man. I watched them do that shit to Suge night for 20 years. They tried to put Tupac murder on Suge. You feel what I'm saying? And that's hey, JD. 
That's yep. fucked up. Yeah. Hey, I was about he to had, tell you. He had, it's another. It's it's uh Deuce M's. He he wants to fade with whack one hundred two, bro. He's just like you, bro. I remember I told you it's like thirty people lined up. Yeah. See, yeah. I didn't even know. See, I didn't even know none of this shit was going on when he, when he did this shit with me, bro. I had no idea that this is that he do this kind of shit on the regular. I think yeah, like, JD. I, Good yeah. luck trying to. I'm from South Central LA. I'm a dime who out the brims, homie. So when I got on this app, you know, motherfucker, this is for networking purposes, etc. He tried to, you know, slide up under a nigga. That's the type of nigga he is, old penitentiary type nigga. You know, see where, see what plum he can feed a nigga, get him up under there, nigga. I'm, I walk in, stand on my own ten. So I don't need a nigga. You understand what I'm saying? For nothing. So. From there, I end up calling the nigga out for the fade. He said he was going to give it to me. Shit all on YouTube. That nigga, man, that nigga been ducking like a pi pinata, my nigga. <laughs> no, I, nigga thought, see, I didn't know. I didn't know. The reason why he took it, because I thought the nigga stood on business, man. When he said this shit, I'm like, okay, we finna get to it. I, I didn't know that he was a pussy like that. I did not know he was a full-blown pussy. Well, let like me that. ask you this, JD. Did you know that uh, his brother got killed in Oklahoma? Yup, I just found that out. You know, since this shit been going on, bro, fans send me everything. I've been getting, it's so much shit on this nigga and so much shit going on. That's what I'm saying. I, I, that's why I was kind of confused. Like, how could you attack a nigga about any type of homosexual shit and all the shit that you got going on in your back in real life, though? Like, you you making up stories on niggas and this is your real life. So it was kind of funny to me when he did that shit. I'm like, boy, I'm finna have fun with this nigga. Like, he played with the right one, my nigga, because I don't play with niggas at all. I don't play with no man. I play hey, with did you kids. ever when you did your your fan time? Did you ever read Cointel Pro? No, I didn't read that book. I, did, I read a lot of books. I was definitely a book reader, but I didn't read Cointel Pro. I didn't. Well, no, I didn't well, they were uh, the FBI was the only motherfuckers in history passing disinformation and having campaigns to uh, try to devalue the influence of solid motherfuckers within the community. The Panthers, uh, the Brown Berets even peaceful as martin luther king so yeah that's that that that's the jewel i'm gonna drop you know no nah, real shit i think you see through the bullshit like i see through it and like i said it it it, 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 it took it took it took me a second to realize what type of time this nigga was on but when when when, when, a, when a square ass grown ass woman that don't got nothing to do with street life turned around and told me you know what he i think he's the police that shit blew my mind <laughs> Oh, you got to get the CST ay, ay, ay. bag paperwork. We got to get the paperwork. Hey, 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 Wack is a hip-hop cornetail pro tool, man. I've been saying exactly. that for months. Hey, bro, and I've been getting that from a lot of people, bro. A lot of people been telling me, bro, stop dealing with this nigga. This nigga's the police on a whole different level. And, when, uh, and, and all the signs is there. All the signs is starting to be there, bro. And I'm like, oh, crazy. So, you know, and I ain't, I ain't never been one to just call a nigga the police for no reason. But when you start doing police shit and you steady dealing with the police, uh, I call a spade a spade. I, I brought the paperwork on here from the Main Street case, Dell Dog, rest in peace, right? And they had confidential source number two on there who got told on, uh, who Stutterbox told on, and he called trying to get, uh, try to get Dell Dog number for Mark Stevens, right? That was the whole little uh, shack extortion shit and a whole bunch of other shit, right? Nigga, the, get, the nigga brought two police officers on the app to, to vouch that he's not working with the police. <laughs> he brought two police officers yeah. on the app? Yeah. Reggie, Reggie Wright and Greg Caden. Yeah. <laughs> I was there, nigga. Oh, I know who Reggie Wright is. I don't know who Greg is. I know who Reggie Wright is. Red, Red fuck with my nigga shit. He the one who said all that bullshit too. That nigga's a weirdo. He definitely police. Right. That's crazy. And, and the nigga Greg Caden is a disgraced, crooked police officer, LAPD officer, and the one that raided WAC 100 house. Right? So, yeah, man. It, 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 so, he <laughs> raided your house or you bring him on clubhouse? To oh, say wow. that you're not working with the police. And the crazy shit, the paperwork that we had got was was a, a a federal investigation on the main streets, and he lied talking about uh Greg Caden is the one that transcribed the transcript. 
You feel me? So yeah, so, man. So the, so the paperwork got it got whack name in it. Yeah, it do have his name <laughs> in it. I, matter of fact, I'll send it to you. You make make up man, it. Man, please you. send me that, man. It's the type of shit I'm into. You know, I, I, I like paperwork. I, all right, man. I used to check niggas' paperwork on the yard all the time. This this my this my job. Yeah, let me see some paperwork. I need to see that. Is this going to stop you from wanting uh, to beat his ass or not? Are you still going to beat his ass? Oh, Only no, we're going to no, gonna fight regardless. Like, that's, just, <laughs> man, that's just some man shit we got to do. We got we to gotta get that out the way to go. My mama told we me to whoop his ass. We, we smash police my, in my mama, my mama we smash police in the yard. I ain't never let my mama down. Them police get beat up on the yard, too. I can't hear you, bro. I said, shit, them police get beat up on the yard, too. Is that All nigga going somebody? <laughs> All the time. But, but he, no, it's a show. Hey, so look, show I got to gotta get ready to get off this thing, bro. I'm in the middle of the uh, yeah, no show, level bro. freeway. Too. I appreciate y'all having me on, man. I appreciate the love and support. We, we, we going to try to get this nigga outside for the fun of it. <laughs>